Hello, Magic Casters! My name is Chance, welcome to my spellbook, and thank you so much for tuning into the second episode of our Cantrip series. At least the revisited Cantrip series, if you want to call it that, where we're going to be going through all the Cantrips a second time and adding in a ton more information. I've learned a lot since I did the initial videos, and I want to share all that with you guys. Today we're going to be taking a look at Blade Ward, which many have called one of the worst spells in D&D 5e in general, and certainly one of the worst cantrips. I think I will be able to mount hopefully a decent defense of this cantrip, and hopefully move it from that never take category into a more niche category, if that makes sense. Blade Ward is usable by the Bard, Sorcerer, Warlock, and the Wizard, as so far as to say it is found on their spell lists. There are other ways to gain access to it, uh, several classes pulled from these spell lists, as well as a handful of feats like Magic Initiate. And Blade Ward is found in the good old Player's Handbook, so everyone should have access to it. Before we dive into its mechanics, I'd like to point out if you'd like to watch the full series in its entirety, you can do so by clicking on that little eye icon up top there and clicking on the relevant playlist. Outside of that, you can wait until the end of the video and click on one of the end screens. With that out of the way, let's now dive into the mechanics of Blade Ward. The effect at a glance is as followed. For the duration, you have resistance against bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage dealt by weapon attacks. The cast time is one action, the range is self, the duration is one round, the components are verbal and somatic, meaning you have to speak forth in incantation and gesture with one hand, and the school is abjuration, which is just protection magic if you'd like to look at it that way. Something I do want to point out here is that by raw, this only applies to weapon attacks. What that means is, is it doesn't really apply to traps and the like. I always homebrew it so that it does, just to provide a little bit more incentive for this cantrip to be taken. However, seeing as how it's a cantrip and you can cast it unlimited number of times, there's no real reason why you can't just cast it constantly, um, so long as you're in a magic-dense society where casting spells out of the blue isn't going to be viewed with suspicion. I don't see a problem with doing that. In any case, let's now move on to its full description. You extend your hand and trace a sigil of warding in the air. Until the end of your next turn, you have resistance against bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage dealt by weapon attacks. If you are not familiar with what the term resistance means, it just means you take half damage, which is pretty dang cool if you ask me. The biggest downside to this spell in particular is that it takes up an action. And actions are pretty precious in 5e, as so far as to say you can do a lot with them. Um, one of the things you can do with your action is take the dodge action, which imposes disadvantage on attack rolls against you, potentially making them miss outright. You can also take the disengage action and just get away without provoking an attack of opportunity, or the dash action and just get away really quick. So, how does Blade Ward fit into that? Eh, there are charts online that go over its effectiveness. As a general rule of thumb, the dodge action is superior in early levels, but as their chance to hit modifier increases, the dodge action becomes less and less viable. It is at that point where Blade Ward tends to be the better option, seeing as how if you're going to take damage anyways, you might as well reduce the heck out of it. Is it worth the action? You know, it kind of depends on the circumstances. That being said, let's get into some alternative uses here. The first alternative use, and arguably best use for this spell, is to prolong concentration. If you're not super familiar, Whenever you take a damage while concentrating on a spell, you must make a constitution saving throw to maintain that concentration. 
the DC for the check equals 10, or half the damage you take, whichever number is higher. If you take damage from multiple sources, such as an arrow and dragon's breath, you may make separate saving throws for each of the damages. What this means is using Blade Ward, at least for the early and mid game, the odds of you needing to make a check higher than a 10 are relatively low. That's of course assuming you're playing a caster that's being fairly cautious, but even if you're not, this is still a good way to guarantee you're not just wasting spell slots when your concentration ends. Another great way to use this is to use it fairly similar to how the disengage action works, by casting it on yourself before you decide to flee from a scenario. This is more beneficial than the disengage action if you're planning on a running through several enemies melee range, although if it's just the one, disengage is certainly a better option. And the third way of using this spell is to just use it in times of general crisis and panic. This is more of an RP decision rather than a mechanical one necessarily. So let's say you and your party are being ambushed by um, thieves with access to invisibility potions or the spell or something of the like, and you don't know when or where the next attack is going to happen. All you know is that it's going to happen. So needless to say, your character is likely going to be freaking out right now, and something like Blade Ward would probably be be their first line of defense to improve their odds of surviving. Overall, this is something that's going to be most important at early levels, as if you are a full caster, you'll gain access to spells in the mid or late game that outshine this in incredible ways, although as something to fall back on, something to just improve your overall survivability, I see no reason why Blade Ward isn't a viable option. Now let's get into some potential combos here. The first interesting combo you can apply with Blade Ward is to combine Blade Ward with the Heavy Armor Master feat. This is absolutely nuts at early levels by the way, it does kind of drop off towards the mid and late game. At the start of the game however, if you decide to apply this combo, the odds of you actually taking any significant damage is going to be slim to none. If you are unfamiliar with Heavy Armor Master, it does a handful of things, um, the first being increasing your strength score, which may or may not be important to you, but the second is where it really matters. While you are wearing heavy armor, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage that you take from non-magical weapons is reduced by 3. This is damage reduction, it's different than temporary hit points. Meaning if you take an attack for, let's say, 6 damage, you reduce that by 3, and then you apply it to yourself. If you take 99 damage, you reduce that by 3, and you take 96 damage. What's really interesting is when Blade Ward gets involved, it halves the damage before you reduce it. So, for example, let's go back to the, the example of taking 6 damage, right? So, you... You apply Blade Ward, something attacks you and it deals 6 damage. Since you have resistance to it, through Blade Ward it gets halved, and then it gets reduced by 3, meaning you don't take any damage. It's really cool, I've seen this work to various degrees of effectiveness, it really works well when you're dealing with large amounts of weak enemies. Because Blade Ward's effect lasts a full round, you can kind of cheese it where that full round, you're more or less untouchable by them. And since some of the most common creature types in the game are likely to have fairly low hit dices with just multi-attack or some additional effects, this is actually a pretty safe bet to go with, at least at the beginning of combat. Now let's move on to another combo, this one involves meta magic and more specifically the quickened spell meta magic. When you cast a spell that has a cast time of one action, you can spend two sorcery points to change the cast time to one bonus action for this casting. As I mentioned earlier, one of the biggest problems with Blade Ward is that it consumes an action. This is a good way to kind of cheese around that and make it so it takes a bonus action instead. And to be honest, if Blade Ward just took a bonus action on the beginning, I would consider it a must-have for any Gish character. 
However, there is a conversation to be had whether or not it's even worth using this meta magic for it. I would say it's circumstantial, as with most things. There are ways to get meta magic without taking levels in Sorcerer, namely meta magic Adept, which is released with Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. However, outside of that, it kind of just depends on playstyle, the campaign, and the party composition you're in as well. So, I don't know, take it if you think it seems interesting. There are some subclass features that work really well with Blade Ward as well. The first one being the Eldritch Knight, and it's going to be worth noting the College of Valor Bard has something very, very similar to this, but Eldritch Knight is more popular, so I'm just going to put this one. But be aware if you are a College of Valor Bard, uh, there is a way for you to get this same feature more or less as well. Uh, in the Eldritch Knight's case, beginning at 7th level, when you use an action to cast a cantrip, you can make one weapon attack as a bonus action. So, you don't really have to pick and choose. You know, if you're going to use your action to attack anyways, you might as well just use it to cast Blade Ward and get an attack just because. I think this is pretty strong, especially at later levels where the odds of you taking damage are going to be pretty substantial anyways, so you might as well do your best of mitigating that damage you're going to be taking and essentially deleting it off the battlefield entirely. It's really cool stuff. And the fourth potential combo we're going to be covering is pairing Blade Ward with Armor of Agathist. If you're not familiar, Armor of Agathis is one of the most iconic Warlock spells. Of course, there are other ways to get it, but Warlocks are the primary users of it. And its description reads as followed. A protective magical force surrounds you, manifesting as a spectral frost that covers you and your gear. You gain 5 temporary hit points for the duration. If a creature hits you with a melee attack while you have these hit points, the creature takes 5 cold damage. At higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot of 2nd level or higher, both the temporary hit points and the cold damage increase by 5 for each slot. What Blade War does in conjunction with Armor of Agathis is it essentially doubles its effective duration, which is really, really nice. If they're only going to be dealing half damage to you, then your temporary hit points are going to last twice as long, and as a result, you'll end up dealing twice as much damage. I think this is pretty smart, especially if you're playing a Warlock and you don't have a ton of spell slots anyways, you might as well try and get the most bang for your buck out of the spell slots you do have access to. Now let's move on to the Heroes of the Past. The first hero we're going to be talking about is Steve Morris. This guy is a mad lad, by the way. He has this crazy habit of typing out full paragraphs and essays about various spells. So I feel like giving him some credit where it's due is unavoidable. A lot of what he talks about here is very similar to what we've already covered. However, I feel like recognizing him is important. Blade Ward is useful in a number of ways. It can be used by spellcasters to improve their chances of maintaining concentration. Less damage taken means less DC required for the con check. If you need the haste to stay on the Barbarian or any other spell that is crucial to stay in play, Blade Ward can be used to dissuade enemies from targeting the spellcaster to remove the spell. It's also useful for Conjuration and Necromancy wizards and other classes with those spells. Animate Dead, Control Dead, and most Conjuration spells either have no action required or only a bonus action required to give commands to minions. A Necromancer can defend themselves with Blade Ward, focus on a Concentration spell, and command their undead all in the same turn, and they still have their reaction, movement, and interaction. Yes, it would take two turns to set up, but you could do it, and still not sacrifice your ability to do any damage or support the party. Blade Ward is also great with Quicken Spell, Bonus Action, a Concentration Spell, and Action Blade Ward, or vice versa, it doesn't really so much matter. Between the resistances from Blade Ward and the Sorcerer's Con Save proficiency, you're not losing concentration anytime soon. Throw in Warcast for any of advantage on that con check as well. There's also a new Eldritch Invocation called Eldritch Mind that gives you advantage on con checks as well. 
Overall, I think this is a great synopsis. Steve Morris, if you are watching this video, man, I tip my hat to you. If you're not, no worries, but if you're watching and you're not Steve Morris, check out our videos and see what his posts are. Seriously, probably one of the best commenters we have. The second comment I want to feature here is by Holy One, and it's one of the most commonly asked questions in relation to Blade Ward, and that's what about magical weapon attacks? The spell doesn't specify that it only applies to non-magical attacks, nor does it say that it can take on magical attacks. The vast, vast, vast majority of DMs say it doesn't really matter what the weapon is, it only matters what the damage type is. So most say weapon attacks, magical or non, are fine, so long as they're dealing the piercing, slashing, or bludgeoning damage mentioned earlier. Not to mention, it's kind of one of those things where if you're a dungeon master and you say no, it only applies to non-magical attacks, you've basically made this cantrip completely useless at higher levels of play, and you really don't want to do that if it can be helped. Just because you only have a small amount of options for cantrips in terms of the slots you have. So you want them to be viable at every level of play. And when you're dealing with the support cantrips, they're kind of not commonly chosen over the damaging ones anyways. So anytime you try and nerf them even further, it removes them from most players' options in general. Now let's get on to my personal thoughts about Blade Ward. I must say, since the time I did the first video and now, I have kind of warmed up to the idea of Blade Ward being a viable option. Although, if you're being a power gamer and trying to get every ounce of power you can out of a character, I highly doubt Blade Ward's gonna be for you. As much as it sucks to say, there are better spells at early levels that kinda do Blade Ward's job and then some, as well as several feats and class abilities that give you either alternative ways to heal or temporary hit points outright. For those reasons, I can see why Blade Ward isn't viable in most long-term campaigns. However, that being said, in terms of one-shot potential, I can see Blade Ward being quite useful. And in terms of characters with very limited spell slots, as is quite common at early levels of play, Blade Ward is a great way to help extend concentration and make sure those spells don't just fizzle out and waste that spell slot in the process. In addition to that, using it in conjunction with class abilities, like in the Eldritch Knight's case, really do help improve your overall survivability, and if you are playing an Eldritch Knight, and if you are wearing heavy armor, you're likely the sponge for the party's damage anyways, and it might be worth taking this cantrip just so you can essentially double your viability in that role through having most damage you're going to be taking. That being said, since Blade Ward only applies to slashing, piercing, and bludgeoning damage, you are going to be going up against magical foes as you get later into the game, and Blade Ward's usefulness, it's really going to vary based on the circumstances from that point on. In terms of ways to mix it up a little bit, I would make it so it applies to all sources of those damage types, meaning traps and things like that would be applicable as well, and that would extend its viability a little bit further out, and if you really want to cheese it and make it a must pick, make it a bonus action instead of an action to cast, and I can guarantee you'll see a lot more casters engaging with it. However, I would only recommend doing that if you are in a scenario where the party's characters either rolled really poorly for their hit points or are just naturally not tanky, and you find the group as a whole is spending a lot more time down than you feel like they should, and you really don't want to have to scale every encounter down for them. So, under those scenarios, I would say it'd be fine to do. That being said, let me know what you think of Blade Ward down beneath in the comments section. Mention any thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, or ideas and alternative uses of your own. Who knows, you might get featured in a future video someday. And on a side note regards to that actually, I do the recording for these videos more often than not the same day you see them. 
So if you'd like to get your comment in, it's never too late to come up with a good comment and post it on one of the videos we haven't done yet. And I always read through the comments on those videos before I do the voice work for them, just in case any edits need to be made. So there's no real harm in doing it, right? Also, if you'd like to check out the old Blade Ward video, I'll leave a link down beneath in the description if you want to see what other comments I might have overlooked and not included in this video, as well as if you want to like see how far the Blade Ward video has come since that initial one, you're more than welcome to it. With that PSA out of the way, if you'd like to get a free one-shot written by yours truly, you can do so by clicking over to the guild hall, links down beneath in the description, and using code WELCOME to get yours. And I also have another channel where I talk about Pathfinder 2E, so if you're interested in potentially learning another tabletop RPG and broadening your horizons, feel free to check that channel out as well, I have quite a few videos up there already. So yeah, in any case, I hope you all have a great day, and as always, happy spellcasting everyone!